Hi everyone. So today we'll be looking at the slate material editor. Uh, we'll go through in detail of um, the overall interface, how you can use it to make your workflow a lot faster. We'll also look at some tips and tricks to help you along the way in the process of material creation and saving your material libraries. So let's just jump into it. So by default, whenever you open Max, uh, you'll be represented with the uh, normal compact material editor, uh, which doesn't give you a lot of uh, options and flexibility uh, in the material creation process. I would highly recommend using the slate material editor. So if you click and hold the material editor button, you can get the slate material editor option. So when you open your slate material editor, it will look something like this. Um, I've customized my material editor uh, interface a little bit according to my liking. I'll show you how I've set that up. So to create your own material library, what you can do is um, you can right click here. You can do new material library. You can save it wherever you want. New library 01. And it'll just come up there. And whenever you're creating a material, Once you've created the material, what you can do is basically just click, hold and drag it in your library. And then just do right click, hit save. So now whenever you open Max, uh, that material library will stay there and you can use it in multiple projects. So the second thing is you can also change um, the view of these uh, maps and how the text appears uh, in these uh, sections here. So as you can see with my uh, material library that I've set up, uh, I've got a bigger preview. So it's just easier to look for a material because it's sometimes it's really hard to see the material in the small thumbnail. So if you do right click on the mail material library, you can go to display material as and you can change the icon size to small, medium or large. One thing that you might notice is whenever you're creating a material library and whenever you reopen Max, it starts rendering all these images out. So what you can do is basically let 3 Studio Max render all these images. Once they are all rendered, just do right click, hit and save. Once you've done that, whenever you reopen Max, it won't re-render all these images again. So also you can see here that um, some of the images are coming up as rendered and clear, but some of them aren't. So um, it sometimes happens when you're working on a project and you've got so many materials open that 3 Studio Max will start to render all those materials out. So you can actually stop that rendering process by clicking this small icon down there. So now because I've turned it off, like those materials aren't rendering, but if I turn it on, you will see it's rendering 26 images right now and you'll see all of them being cleared up. As you can see, the rendering is finished and all the images are clear. They are done, they're saved. So now I just have to do right click hit and save. So now whenever I open Max and if I open that material library section, uh, they will all come up as rendered and I can just click and drag them into the viewport. But whenever you drag something into the viewport, 3 Studio Max still needs to render them again because it needs to load all those textures the next thing that um helped me a lot uh, in the material creation process is sometimes it gets really hard because you can't see the uh, final material um really clearly because the thumbnail is so small and once you have more complicated materials going on it, it gets a little bit hard so what i did was i created a separate window for the material preview so the way you create that is basically so i'll just close that so you can right click and click open preview window this will give you this small hovering window so you can change the size of this window and then you can click hold and drag and you'll see all these small arrows pop up so it can basically snap to those locations so i usually just put it up there so now 
it's always there and I can see the final product. Uh, but the second thing that you can do with this preview is uh, basically you can see down there, there's a drop box drop down menu which gives you all the maps that are being used in this material so you can actually change that to follow current selection which is the option I highly recommend so if I click that so now whenever I click on an image it will basically show me what that image is so the follow current selection option comes in really handy when you've got a more complicated material um, and you need to tweak each and every uh, section separately so now if I click that composite you'll see that that preview is basically just giving me a full combination of all these maps and if I click there I change the saturation you'll see that gets updated there so I can look at each and every material at every stage in, in like a big preview and it just uh, follows it every time you click any section the next thing that you can do to keep yourself more organized is uh, whenever you start creating materials and stuff or if you uh, pick materials from objects, uh, they might overlap each other and it will be a little bit hard to see it clearly. So what you can do is you can use this option lay out all vertically and if you click that it will lay all the materials vertically in a very nicely done order or if you click and hold you can also stack them horizontally if you prefer that. So the next uh, good thing about using the slate material editor is basically if you're um, creating a material and you want to use some map or some composite which you've actually used in another material. So you don't have to actually copy that again. You can basically just click and drag it. And now those maps are being instanced rather than uh, creating a copy of those maps and that will take more memory if you want to create a copy of uh, just this section you can just select them all and if you shift and drag it will create a copy of all those materials so the next thing is basically this is something um, hidden in the materials section which a lot of people are not sure, uh, aware about uh, which is the controllers and people don't know how to use these so i'll show you what the advantage of using a controller is so uh, whenever you're working on a material so you've got your diffuse reflection bump gloss everything all the maps and all of them have either similar tiling or different tiling if it is something like a marble or brick where one mapping will get carried carried across onto all the other maps so to make that um, process a little bit faster so what you can do is basically select your main diffuse map right click and click show all additional parameters once you click that you can click this plus icon and you'll see it will give you a massive list uh, which basically represent each and every option in this box there so your tiling these two options which you usually need to change um, if I go real world size and if I do thousand there and thousand there you'll see those values got updated so what you can do is basically if you need all the maps to take these values off from just one map so you can basically click hold that and add a bezier point to this section and then you can do the same to the all other it might take a while to set this all up but once you set it up it, it works uh, really well so now because I've added that busier point I can basically just drag and drop into all the other maps you can control all the values from here um, so now I've changed that if I go to the next one so oh that's still in tiling so what I can do is basically again just check that real world size on all of them or again I can create another brazier point
So um, in this um, section, because it's uh, just a checkbox, value of zero will mean off and any value above zero will mean on. So um, I can also instance this setting. So I've done all that. So now if I go back in there, uh, so all maps are real world size and the size is 100 by 100 and all of them got updated uh, it, it does take a little bit of time to set all this up um, but it, it does help you um, eventually when you're tweaking your materials and if your materials are getting really complicated like this small feature it does help a lot um, next thing that you can do is whenever you're working in the slate material editor if you have a material selected and you have an object selected rather than you can either use this button assign material to selection or if you just hit a it will apply the material to the selection you can also assign colors um to your different material libraries if you think it might help you just visually you can do right click edit group color and you can change the group colors um whatever to uh, whatever you like um you can also set up your uh favorites uh, map separately so um, instead of selecting the maps from this section here if there are certain maps or materials that you use uh, a lot you can add them to your uh, favorites so basically anything that you like in this section here you can just click and drag and drop it there make sure whenever you're dropping stuff it comes up as as a blue line if it comes up as red it will basically replace what is there with the new option so make sure it's coming up as blue when you drop it so once it's um there so like color correction i use that a lot i can just click and drag in between the two maps and that will get um attached there um the next thing that you can do is basically um in slate material editor this is uh, considered as your main uh, workspace to keep yourself a little bit more tidy what you can do is basically you can um, name your workspace so if I say this um, viewport will contain all my building materials I can create a new one so this will contain all plants this will contain all fixtures so this will help you uh, manage your uh, materials a little bit um, easier so they don't get mixed up and um, you don't have all your materials just in one uh, view because it can get a bit hard to keep a track of what materials that you've created and also whenever you've got like a hundred materials in your viewport with max will have to render all of them out to you save yourself a little bit of time and trouble it's better to uh, create these different viewports and uh, keep everything organized if you do need to bring um, one material from this workspace into the other you can do the same so just click and drag from there and you can drop it there it will give you an option of bringing that material as an instance or a copy so if you do copy this will be created as a new material and it won't affect the one which is back here so if i hit z uh, which is zoom extend all in the other viewport it works here as well it will basically zoom out to everything in this viewport so if you see if i'm zoomed in here if i hit z it'll zoom out and if I have any material selected and if I hit Z, it will zoom in onto that material. Another way that you can uh, move materials around um, like this is basically uh, there's an option here, move children. So if I have that option off, all these um, sections will move separately irrespective of where they are connected to so just having that option on whenever you move a material all the children will move with the main parent so if you're trying to find a material that you know that you've created and you uh, named it properly you can also search for a material by name so if you hit this small icon down here so if you name know the name of the material so if i do break 01 and if i hit enter it will basically take me to that material 
or if I have just written break it will zoom me out to both of those two materials which have that name and it will select both of them for me so I can move them and I can bring them to side um, one last thing uh, that I'll show you is what you can do is basically if you know that you've created a material in another file um, and you don't want to open the file to bring that material in so what you can do is basically if you go so if you go to open material library and if you navigate to where your 3d file is stored by default it won't show you your max files uh, because it's only searching for dot mat files which is a material file so you can change that to dot max file once you do that you'll see all your 3 studio max files and you can actually just click and open this 3 studio max file once you've opened it you'll see it will load each and every material which is in that file and then you can do the same so you can just drag and drop whatever material that you need from that file and once you're done you can either keep that there or you can even just get rid of that by closing the material library so this was just a general overview of how to use the slate material editor i really recommend you use the slate material editor over the compact one because it will save you um, a lot of time and hassle and also it just um, visually it looks a lot better to have all materials and all your maps on just one massive plane where you can basically link maps uh, from one to the other and you can create your final material so please do let me know um, how do you use your material editor or if you have any uh, tips and tricks of uh, the way that you use it um, and if you like today's video please don't forget to hit the like button and please don't forget to subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one